Hello there, thank you very much for joining me today. Um, today I'm going to do a, a very quick review of the Marconi 2968 radio communications test instrument. Uh, this test set is really a, one of the uh, show models, if you like, of the RF test set world. Um, when this model was developed, it was it was developed with lots of new input uh, by Marconi into what would be required on the RF test bench and repair bench. And indeed, um, a lot more thought went into the design of this than the previous models of the 2955, a 2945, and the 2955A, B, and R test sets uh, that were out a lot earlier than this. Um, such as, for example, a 150 watt port for RF, um, supports SSB, AM, FM phase modulation. It has DVM uh, ports here and current meter, so you could do away with having a bench AVO meter or DVM meter that was all inbuilt in the test set it supported uh, additional radio systems as well such as MPT1327, Tetra, Tetrapol, uh, P25, MPT1327 trunk radio systems or FFSK systems, POXAG, paging systems it also emulated the um, cell call uh, systems such as ZVIE, ZVIE EEA, um, CCIR, DTMF tones, uh, it emulated cellular networks such as GSM 900 networks so it was all inbuilt into this which I'll, I'll go into very shortly. Um, we've also got a memory card feature which isn't seen on the earlier test sets and we have a low 1 watt port RF uh, port here as well, split duplex ports just like some of the other test sets do um, most of the ports are very similar to what you find on the other radio test sets um, but this also has an off-air monitor as well as a trap gen, spectrum analyzer uh, duplex test TXRX uh, and systems, it does quite a lot does this test set um, the base model of this was the IFR Marconi or Aeroflex 2965 this is a 2968 model, we had the 2965, I think the 2966, 67 and then the 2968. They all look the same, but the 2968 was a fully featured model. Um, the other test sets didn't have as many features on prior. So if you're going to go for this type of test set, uh, I rec fully recommend you go for the 2968. I have a lot of experience of using these test sets, I've had them on the bench for many years um, in my career and um, very reliable, very good. The only thing I, d I don't like about the test set, which is if you've got it on the bench amongst other kit stacked on top or around it, is if it doesn't have a power on off button at the front. Um, it's a rocker switch on the back, which I'll go into in the next part of the video with the features on the back of the test set as well. Okay, so let's get straight into it. Um, if I look at the receive uh, monitor, for example, um, here we're generating a signal which I'm receiving on this radio and uh, basically we've got the um, RF gen on and off uh, we can set the frequency the RF gen frequency and then we can set up whatever frequency we want level you know we can turn the level up and down uh, we can select the ports as well that the signals coming in on uh, being injected out of so we've got different levels uh, we've got different mod gens and again all these frequencies can be set up and levels and of course if we go into tones for example uh, within tones we've at the moment we're in the poxag paging test um, so we can set up a, a frequency uh, of 433.5 megahertz in this case and we can send we can put a tone in if we want um, and we can call a pager uh, let's see now the RIC code, went to RIC code in and then call pager so that's emulating paging networks uh, for sequential tones we have things like EA for example cell call which a lot of the ambulance services used to use I still do around the world um, and we can obviously enter in a, a sequence so we can put in a for example a radio call sign and then uh, we can enter that we can then send it um, 
which is under tone mode, I believe, tones. So that's the sort of, you can emulate tone networks. Uh, just a matter of interest, if ever you get a cell call radio that you want to use on amateur radio bands, where you can program the tone function on the side to send a, a, a fixed tone out at a particular frequency. Uh, in the EEA tone, so tone 8, which is 1747, is a really good tone to use for as a tone um, uh, encode button, if you like, for opening up analog um, amateur radio repeaters. And you can just get program a cell call radio to send tone 8 continuously for say 500 milliseconds or whatever it takes to open an amateur radio repeater. Uh, in addition to that, we've also got CTCSS. Um, We've got DTMF, uh, where we can obviously emulate DTMF tones. Uh, we've got DCS, which is digital coded squelch. Um, obviously, we've been into sequential, poxag paging again, etc. Um, so that's what we can emulate on the receiver side of things. Um, as likewise, in the receiver mode, we've got signal to noise, which is the difference between. Uh, the demodulated, if you connect the speaker output of the radio to the AF input on the test set, you can read um, the signal to noise, which is a 1 kHz test tone, which is that, for example. Um, and that will read the difference between the signal, which is a 1 kHz tone you can hear, and the noise, which is when the tone isn't there on the receiver at certain spec, which is denoted in the service manual for the radio. Um, with the RF level, that it must reach a certain RF level and be above a certain specification for signal to noise. And then this is Synad, signal to noise and distortion. Uh, so Synad reads the signal, which is a 1 kHz tone that's recovered audio from the radio and coupled into the AF input. The noise, which is obviously the crackle and interference on the receiver when the RF gen level is wound down to a, a very low level uh, again the specification will be in the service manual for the radio and the distortion so it measures um, basically three components the signal noise and distortion and so it brings all those three things together to create what's called a synad reading which is displayed here and a service manual for radio for example will say that a receiver on a on a radio like this has got to be um, better than say 12 dB sine add at neg 113 dBm. So if you were to set that um, parameter on the test set and you were receiving a signal now with the audio output, the speaker output from the radio coupled into the AF input on the test set, we would see the waveform on the scope and we would get a sine add reading. And you would need to make sure that the spec of the radio is better or above what it quotes in the manual. If it isn't, it needs retuning or repairing. Um, we have other things as well, which is available in the Synad um, audio side of things, which is, we can measure distortion uh, on its own. As you've seen earlier, we can measure signal to noise, signal to noise and distortion. We have an audio analyzer capability as well. We can analyze audio frequencies. Uh, we have a scope. And we can expand that scope as well, um, so we can obviously magnify what we're looking at. Uh, we have markers, so we can adjust the markers in a scope as well. Um, in addition, we have other features such as bandpass filters. Uh, we can set up different filtering for just pulling out the audio frequency band, the CTCSS and DCS if we just want to look at that on its own. Uh, separately from audio signals, no filtering at all, or a 20 kHz low pass, 5 kHz low pass. Uh, likewise, for the band pass, we have a, a speech band filter, um, CMESS filtering, and then back to speech band filtering. Um, we have lots of features in here that we can use. Um, we've got the modulation or, or mod, so we can, for example, have. Um, we can have, for example, three mod gens plus an external mod gen if we want. Uh, we can set these on and off as appropriate. If I put that back at zero dBm again. So we can switch the mod gens on and off. 
that one's set at 2.5 kilohertz, uh, 500 hertz, etc. And we can basically go through each mod gen and set it internally within the, the test instrument as well. Okay, so if we go to transmit test, under transmit test uh, we have uh, frequency and power so we can set auto tuning to be on. So if I transmit on this radio, um, we've got uh, an independent squelch control here as well for receiving off air signals. So one, two, three, four, five. So we can display modulation, uh, deviation, we can display frequency error. So I can enter in a frequency, um, TX frequency of 433.5 megahertz. And I can measure the error now at the transmitter frequency, which is displayed there where it says 406 hertz. So if this is off frequency by too much, we can perform alignments. In addition to that as well, we've got a spectrum analyzer. And uh, we can obviously measure signals on the spectrum analyzer. And uh, we've got quite a few facilities within the spectrum analyzer. When we zoom in as well, we can expand on that. And then obviously we can then widen, if you like, uh, the available scope bandwidth for the spectrum analyzer bandwidth. Um, to the full width of the test set, which is 400 kilohertz to 1 gigahertz, or you know, we can go right down to the, the lower frequencies. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. So we can see that nicely. Um, we have markers as well in the spectrum analyzer mode, peak find, we can lock the markers. Uh, we can set a reference frequency to the marker. We've got resolution bandwidth changes as well for different resolution bandwidths, um, dB per octave, lots of different features within there. Uh, here we've got the duplex test. Um, so this is where we'll be transmitting and receiving at the same time. And we can have different directions. We can have input and output again on the N type, output on the N and input on the TNC and then reversed the other way around and then everything on the low power port um, again very similar to the transmit receive identical but we, we can do both simultaneously on duplex systems where we've got a radio that's receiving and transmitting at the same time such as a repeater okay if we go to um, RF test for a moment and in RF test mode uh, we can set up different tests here for testing things like filters, duplexers, uh, we can put the tracking generator on for example when we're aligning duplexer filters or bandpass filters for RF, we've got a mod analyzer uh, we've all sorts of different little, little bits and bobs here so this is the RF in out test. Um, if we expand this for a moment and then we've got the tracking track gen facility here in the spectrum analyzer mode so we can set that track gen on so we're basically sending the signal out through a filter and then getting it back in on this port and the performance of a filter will be read here and you can adjust the frequency bandwidth with this uh, to the full bandwidth of the test set you can, markers are on at the moment so we can adjust the markers uh, we can set a center frequency as well for example so there's so many things that we can do so I'll come back in part two with uh, more testing uh, very shortly <laughs> 